Welcome back to the check-in. My name is Jared, and today I'm here with Colby, and we're going to answer the very, very important question, when should you update your fleet? Is there a certain time? Colby, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. I'm uh, incredibly bullish and happy to be here. Good. I'm glad that you're bullish. We need those types of sentiments, especially where hash price is these days. It's kind of not where we want it to be, I guess is a nice way of saying it. And I wanted to have you on the check-in this week to talk about when should we update our fleet? I wanted to say update our hash, right? When should we update our hardware? And this is a really important question. And the genesis of this was actually a thread that Will had put up on the mining pod. And I'm going to leave that link below in the description if you want to go read it. But basically what he's saying is, look, and this is something that also came up today on a X space that Amanda Fabiano had with uh, Anthony Power. And basically the idea is like, yes, we know Moore's law is going to continue to push technology forward at some level. Maybe that doesn't work with our current ASICs and how much, you know, chips we can actually get on a, on, on, on a, on a board. But the question is it's, it's September, it's September 4th right now. This will come out on September 5th and you're talking to customers. What is your advice to them, basically? Could you break down the landscape? Is it better to buy now or should they be waiting a little bit? Because as the thread will show at the mining pod, and I know you've read it too, Bitmain is rumored to be coming out with a very, very, very powerful machine that will likely make many things that are currently on the market, I don't want to say obsolete, but it will definitely give people who have maybe just bought some FOMO thinking about, oh, what if I had had that? So anyways, there's the context. I'm going to pass you the mic. Please lay out what you're thinking and how you're approaching this and you know how you're supporting clients as well here at Compass. Great question. And I call that the multi-trillion dollar question, right, of how to position oneself to succeed in Bitcoin mining. And I don't have a crystal ball. So if people came to this check-in looking for for that, that's not what this is. But, you know, I'm just one man with an opinion and I'm in this space actively. I have miners online. I've been updating my equipment. And I think that's what most miners are asking themselves right now is how do I stay competitive? How do I stay efficient without catching a falling knife? Which has kind of been the situation in hardware for quite some time now where hardware has gone down um, across the board, next gen, new gen, old gen. Hardware has come way down in value per terahash. And you mentioned it, like there's constantly the new equipment coming out and U3 S21 EXPH, you know, shout out to Bitmain for their naming, naming cadences, always keeping it interesting. But there's always something coming out that's slightly more efficient. And I don't, you know, to answer your question, I don't have an answer to the question because I don't know the future. But I can say that it has typically been a successful strategy to time the market such that you are not buying the top. And if you can find value in hardware and upgrade your equipment such that it is competitive in brutal market conditions which let's let's call it what it is it's been absolutely brutal but if you can be competitive and efficient as we have recently reached all time lows in mining revenue hash price if you can be competitive in these conditions you're doing fairly well for yourself and you are also positioned to potentially benefit from the upside when market conditions eventually improve. I think that's a really great answer. And I think one of the things as Bitcoin miners, and especially with us as Compass, we need to constantly keep an eye on profitability without promising revenue, you know, competitive hashing without promising anything. Because at the end of the day, we don't control Bitcoin price, which is really one of the biggest drivers of, of hash price. The reason why, too, I wanted to have you on is you do our weekly hash highlights where you break into the kind of, I guess, the behind the scenes of mining. You know, when you go past a little bit beyond just looking at hash price, you talk about difficulty. You talk about how that has to do with Bitcoin price. You talk about hash rate, how that's playing in a role as we're seeing that increasing, even though hash price is dropping off to things you don't want to see probably going in opposite directions. And so that's kind of what I, why I wanted to ask you on. And for you personally, is that 
your mindset that you just shared. Basically, look, if I know I'm competitive now with where things are, I'm going to be good. Therefore, if I have some, you know, resources on the side, it may be a good time to invest now and not even wait to see what Bitmain is going to come out with. As you said, the new alphabet soup that they're going to put out in the market. Um, would your advice be to kind of, you know, like you said, if you can be efficient now, go ahead and do that. Don't, you know, one in the hand is, is better than two in the bush type um, philosophy. Yes, in, in many ways, because what is rumored is not what's delivered. And what is actually on the rack available is, is, is different than what is going to be available at the end of Q4 or Q1 next year. So time, you know, time is money. And, and especially in this business, uptime is everything. And getting that hash online so that you can benefit and be positioned for when the market hopefully improves. So if you're still fundamentally bullish Bitcoin and you still see the value of Bitcoin mining, dollar cost averaging those rewards over time, then you want to be positioned to have that hash online so that as and when the market does shift to be more beneficial, more favorable market conditions, you've got that hash online and it's efficient because when that happens, the market can very quickly cut the other way. So it's been a brutal bear where hardware prices have just basically dropped but that can cut the other way and hardware prices can rise even faster than they drop. Yeah, that that's great insight. You don't want to be caught waiting for, I don't know, a new miner to come out when you had two or three months when you could have had a competitive hash online and you just kind of lost it hoping, you know, going back to the one in the hand is better than kind of two in the bush. And I asked this too, because I think right now I've had a couple of friends who are about to update their cell phones, right? They have whatever cell phone they have. And they're like, do I get the 15, which is now discounted? This is for iPhone. Um, I know if you're Android, you're going to hate this comment, but it's like, you know, do I get the 15 or do I wait till the 16 launches and then they're in stores, but I have to wait six weeks. And then that time I have to continue to recharge my X or my 11 or whatever they have. And it's almost just like, do what's best for you today. Take advantage of it today so you can be competitive. I know the iPhone may be kind of a weird example, but I think we're getting into that space where it's like people are strategically thinking about, should I wait? And then what's my gain? And I really love what you said. It's like, no, if you can be online, you can be competitive today, especially in this low hash price environment, that may be the best uh, way to move forward. Because like you said, promises are just promises. And there could be a situation where you wait to get something, you know, towards the end of Q4, you know, maybe around uh, the holiday time, maybe they're not even there. And then maybe also the price has doubled because the whole entire market has turned. And as you said, prices around hardware could actually rise quicker than they fell. Yeah. And also like Bitcoin mining is a, is a very low time preference business. So if you're looking to make a quick buck, this is probably the wrong business to be in. And if you're looking at it in Bitcoin terms and saying, look, I want to stack these sats and you are hoping to potentially do so in a competitive, efficient way where you can achieve a price advantage on the Bitcoin that you're mining, you should talk to a CPA and perhaps there's uh, tax advantages as well to hardware ownership. But it's a long-term game and looking at it as such and also looking at it as a way to get exposure to Bitcoin, the underlying asset which you're doing the work for, I, I like that perspective better than looking at it as a way to make a quick buck. And if you can, if you can operate competitively as we've literally just recently made all-time lows in hash price in the value, the dollars and cents value of the Bitcoin being mined on a daily basis, then you're probably doing pretty well for yourself because how much downside is there? Um, we've seen a lot of downside and, and I personally am deploying my capital into the space because I think we're closer to the bottom than we were the top. And I was buying, I was buying hash at the top and I just have kept buying all the way down. I love that. I think it's a really good reminder and a great way to kind of close out this week's the check-in, which is lower your time preference. If you're long-term BTC, this is a, is a great play right now. 
taking advantage, you know, as they say, when there's blood in the streets, that's when you should probably be investing. And fortunately right now it is a tough time for Bitcoin miners. Um, Colby, thank you for joining. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe. You're listening to this on a podcast platform. Please subscribe. Be sure to follow Compass Mining on X, LinkedIn, and Twitter. And per your last comment about tax advantages, I'm gonna leave a blog that we recently published called Tax Considerations for Bitcoin Miners. If you are mining or if you're thinking about mining, you may wanna look at that because there are some interesting tax implications uh, and potentially advantages depending upon what your mining setup will be. So Colby, thanks so much for uh, taking the time. Peace, love, and Bitcoin. Appreciate you having me. Also, before we sign off, I should certainly mention the S21 Pro Pack, which is 10 S21 Pros, 234 terahash each. That's about 2.34 petahash of the most efficient equipment currently available. So if you're interested in that, you get a huge price break by picking up 10 that are expected to be online within 30 days. Reach out to myself or one of my colleagues. We'll be more than happy to help.